Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another episode of Marketo Food. My name is Joe Wrights, and what we're going to discuss right now is basically just how to send an A-B test in a engagement program. Uh, one of the first, vi actually the first video I ever did in the Nation Talk series went through all three different methods of sending an A-B test through Marketo. Uh, I've gone ahead and put that link in the description of this video as well if you'd like to see uh, the other two methods being uh, in an email type program and then also the champion challenger methodology. Uh, I actually like this one the best. I think it's the most robust and I really live in the space of nurture. So I think it's probably the most practical and useful um, in terms of like your overall strategy and where you'd want to do an A-B test. But a lot of people don't realize that you can do this within an engagement program. So uh, I just want to spend a little bit of time unpacking what this is, how to do it, and how to really bring this into your um, uh, utilization of, of A-B testing so and, and, and nurture. So apologies, I'm in a hotel room. Uh, I'm not sure how great the quality is, but uh, bear with me. So going on over to the screen share. Righteous. All right. So back over in the Fathom Sandbox, uh, let me blow this up a little bit. What you see is I've got a very cleverly named, using our, our naming conventions, uh, program, so <laughs> A-B testing streams. And then when you look at the, oh, before I get there, when you look at the basic tree of the program, uh, we've got a, our basic best practice setup where we have, uh, and granted, use your imagination because I built this as a test just to show you kind of like how to walk through it. But uh, first, you know, we have a folder with our audience makeup, then we have one with our assets, which this would typically be like all your emails and things like that. Uh, you might even have subfolders if you had local forms or landing pages that you were using. Uh, or whatever. And then progression statuses, which again, they're not in here, but um, do those every time. Otherwise, it's kind of like, what's the point of doing anything in Marketo if you're not going to be able to measure and report on success and progress and clicks and all that fun stuff. Um, and then finally, one for reports, because again, there's no point in doing anything if you can't measure it. Um, yeah. So, but what you might expect to see under assets is, like I said, emails. But instead, to do A-B testing, what you're going to find here in this scheme is programs, whole default programs embedded inside of an engagement program. So when you go over to the streams, you can actually drag these in just like you would a, uh, a regular email. And I'm going to show you kind of like how to walk through that piece of the, the process and then like the one little difference between just dragging an email in versus the whole program. So I did email one already. You can see it's active in the stream. And then within message one, we have a couple emails. There's a sending campaign. And then the progression statuses, which obviously you would have these turned on. Uh, but for the purposes of our um, exercise here, clicks link an email. That's an easy trigger to set up and, and adjust the progression status at, for the, the channel progression. And then influenced would be similar trigger, but it would be listening for like, did they fill out a form or request more information or some other level of, you know, this is um, an action that happened. And then this would be the success is how I would recommend setting it up. So when you get down to your RCA reports and you can show program success, you actually know that when you say success, it's actually something meaningful and valuable. So setting a high bar from the get go. And then finally, there's a report folder that uh, we'll cover in a second. So that's what this program looks like. Uh, as you build new emails, you can clone this whole program and just redo the emails uh, just like you normally would. So it's a super scalable process. You can tokenize the sweet bejesus out of all of this, and it's amazing. Um, more on that in a future video. Uh, and probably, uh, while I mention it, um, someone hold me to the fact that I need to do a video on attribution and reporting in general. Um, I swear that's coming. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at message two and walk through like how we go about doing this and adding it to a stream, though. All right. So in message two, we're just going to go sequentially. Uh, I've got two emails, right? And for the purposes of our example, they're just boring templates. But when you do an A-B test, what you want to make sure you do is test, test only one thing at a time. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you have a big delta between test A or email A and email B, if you don't, if you're not, if you're testing more than one thing, you're not going to know what caused the difference. So it seems like it should be common sense. You would be surprised how often um, I see people wanting to test like a million things at once. Just do not, please, for the love of all things holy, do not do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that aside, so here uh, I just grabbed subject line. So this is test A and then email B 
is a super clever, like amazing. My copywriting skills are just out of this world right now. Uh, subject line reads simply test B has a different subject line. So yeah, I know your minds are blown <laughs> and you know, on down to the program controller. Uh, this is our sending campaign and uh, I like, naming it program controller just because it's easy to know what's what. And then you see we have the same progression statuses, which again, you're going to want to turn on. Uh, I don't think I need to walk through what those look like, and we'll get to the report in a second. But looking at the program controller, how you'd want to set this smart campaign up is like a normal smart campaign. You go to the smart list, something really easy, like member of engagement program is this one, your main engagement program is true. You don't need any additional constraints. You don't need any any of that shenanigans. Um, you could, I guess, depending on your instance uh, as needed, but, um, or if, if you had any particular need for certain, uh, yeah, whatever. But uh, for purposes of our discussion, super easy. 90% uh, of the time, just remember the engagement program. The next thing you wanna add as a filter though is, particularly if you have a, a use case where they could go, they could progress from one stream to another and regress back into this one, you want to add a filter to make sure that they haven't received either of these these test A or test B before. Because if you don't do that, um, and they come back into this engagement program, the, because of your embedding programs instead of emails, Marketo loses a little bit of that, um, that smart logic around like, no, this lead has gotten this email before from this stream. I don't need to send it. So you want to make sure you make it a little extra fail safe redundant with a filter like this was not with sent email is, you know, los dos. Tracking, cool. So that's smart campaign, that's the who. The what in the flow is a very simple send email. Um, but what you may or may not have exposure to is this random sample. So you you simply add a choice and then select random sample is, and then you see a 50. Fun thing with random sample is that this is a percentage. So if you say 25 or 50, 50% uh, 50 what this is saying is, a random 50% of your whoever qualified for the smart list is gonna receive email A. The rest will receive email B. Now, the reason I like this better, and I think most, um, I'm thinking of one, one person in particular that I know is just gonna give me a high five when she hears this, is I think it's really cool that email programs let you do like test to 10% of the total audience equally and then send the winner to everybody. But statistically, I don't think that's the most robust thing in the world. Like I would rather get equal data, if I send an email to 10,000 people, I want 5,000 to get version A, 5,000 to get version B, then I have something statistical I can dig my, my, sink my teeth into and get my arms around or whatever, whatever you want to say, um, just to know like what was good and what needs work, um, what, what caused the change and I have, I have more data to work with. So if you can always do a bigger sample size with your testing, please always do that. And then that's it. Uh, you could, you could, if you had some other things you wanted to do on the flow, you could, but that's the core of sending the AB test. And then the schedule tab, we're actually going to leave alone. Uh, and that I'll make, well, yeah, let's just do that now. The reason you don't do the schedule tab is because if you activate this now, it's going to run like a batch and send all these emails to all the people that qualified. So what you'd want in an engagement program setup is for it to utilize the whole streamcast cadence mechanic, right? So Let's collapse this whole program for the simplicity of this. You drag it into the stream. So you, what I did, uh, just so I can narrate this, I went back up to the program level. I went over here to the top for the streams tab where all the Marketo streams live and uh, for this program. And just like you would drag an email in, you're just going to drag this whole default program on over. And then it's going to come up with a slightly different dialogue where it's going to say type is program because Marketo is smart. Uh, you're going to have to type the name again, so message two. And then it's going to ask you for a smart campaign. Now, what it's asking for is the pro, uh, what smart campaign do you want it to run when this program comes up in a cast? So that's obviously going to be our program controller. I select that. I'm good to go. Uh, I have to still activate the email. But uh, now at 930, if they have received email one, uh, either version of it, they're going to progress on to message two and then get one of those tests and then so on and so forth, just like a normal engagement program. Now, one thing you notice we didn't activate the uh, program controller. If I, let's see if I click on it, will it work? Yeah. So 
Marketo just refreshed and you see this weird little icon that you may or may not have ever seen. I think request campaign might have a similar icon, but um, basically that's, that's what's happening is that when, when this program message two program pulls up in the cast, it's going to uh, run this program controller, which, so instead of scheduling it like a batch, you basically use it like a request campaign just based on who qualifies. And then, like I said, you want your progression status turned on. Last thing here is just the report. Um, you could do this a few different ways. Uh, something I found that works really well is if you create three different reports, depending on your cadence, of course, but um, if you have a weekly cadence, for example, you could have a weekly version, uh, a monthly version, and a all-time version, just to see kind of like how your A-B tests have progressed over time. And you can subscribe to these and have them emailed to you, again, in a way that complements your cadence. But for this one being a weekly email type send, uh, just as an example, we say send date is every seven days. We're going to say only the emails that are within this program. And then I don't have any other smart list uh, um, filters to add in for this report. I would just look at report and away I go. Now, obviously, we haven't sent this email, so there's no data. But um, here you would see a normal, this is just an email performance report. You can create it like any other asset. You just go to new local asset and report and then select the type of report you want to make. And the, the beauty of all of this is once you do it once very thoroughly for one program, you can just, it's this easy, clone, clone to same program and name message three. And this is oh in it. Boom. So we have message three. It's got all the same assets. We could modify these emails so that there are new tests and, and then we're basically done. I mean, we just have to maybe adjust a few of the uh, few of the things in here, just review, make sure that all the the references change to your new smart campaign, your new your new uh, program rather. And uh, basically other than that, it's ready to go. So that's uh, that's essentially all you got to do. Uh, so, yeah. So that is really the skinny on how to um, work with A-B testing inside an engagement program. Again, uh, there there's always some little little uniquenesses if if you know you have uh, depending on your cadence and like. Um, if they progress, if they can come back into that stream or exit that stream at any time and go to a different one. So you want to make sure you're mindful of those things but um, and, and make sure that they're accounted for in your filters. But other than that, uh, it's just a great way to be able to dig into your data and understand from a um, A-B testing standpoint what emails work. Is it subject line? Is it call to action? Is it images, body copy? Uh, does the design suck? Sometimes it's as simple as that. So uh, it's 20, almost 2017. You don't have to guess, do some A-B testing, make this part of your SOP, uh, regularly monitor the results of those tests and make some informed changes. And then at the end of the day, you might get to the point where you feel relatively confident about the effective efficacy of the email and you don't need to run the A-B test or review the data every week. But as you get up and running and your Marketo food gets stronger, this start to see what I'm saying, starts to make a little more sense and, you know, crawl, walk, run, and all that. So uh, once again, I have been Joe Wrights. Uh, this has been the 24th episode of Marketo Foo. Um, thank you so much for watching.